Welcome to another episode of Bad Intentions Podcast, the best in the motherfucking West. I am a bitch who don't have her nails done, baby Sheila. And I'm a bitch who don't have my hair done and everything. And I'm a bitch that don't got no sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we some three of the amigo bitches. Hola, que pasa? Wag one. <laughs> uh, welcome to another episode. We got a lot of shit in store for you. This time, I took notes. I brought my notes back. Sheila Jesse Raphael is um, here with notes for our daily news. Before we get into that, how was your week? You want to start with me? Sure. Oh my god, um, my kid. I feel kind of bad though. I'm guilt tripping this week, actually, you guys, because my kids had two weeks off of spring break, and yesterday was the first day that I actually got to. We went to the movies. What you guys see? We went to go see Ghostbusters, and we walked out. Mm-hmm. Actually, no. we did. We walked out. Bella is the one who said, "Was well, I'm ready to go? This movie is so boring." <laughs> and my son was ready to go, and my mama was cold, so we just left. Yeah, like right. But shout out to the concession stand. Yeah, we, we did see we did see uh, uh maybe an hour or so. Or so. Yeah, we so did. It was hella long. I, I, I don't, don't know. Even remember the Ghostbusters being that? I don't. I mean, wasn't it a while a while right. back, twenty some years? Yeah, ago? they keep revamping the Ghostbusters. I Quit guess it's revamping something. that old shit. Let that shit leave. Right. And go, I don't know that. what the franchise is about nerves. the Ghostbusters right. though. But I just want to say this. Purple. Uh. Uh-uh. I just want to say this. When my mom, you guys know, my mom is. I mean, she's up in age, so she has to use the bathroom. You know. So I was. You know, it's dark in the movie theater, and my mom had. I turned my flashlight on my light, so my mom. When she was walking, she wouldn't trip over nobody walking through to go to the bathroom. Right. And it was this lady that was sitting at the end of the row. And I accidentally flashed the light in her face. So she gave me this real John Wayne Gacy look. Like, bitch, why the fuck did you do that? I'm going to kill you later type look. And I was like, wow, that was so rude, right? So when we walked out, I made sure to flash it in her motherfucking face again <laughs> on pr- on purpose this time. Oh, but other than that, my week was really good. My That's week good. was good. My week was good. How about you, Mom? Well, uh, my week was pretty good. I... Uh... I did what I usually do, kick back, you know, smoke, watch TV, you know. Maybe sit all at the same house. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I I, I live, I do pretty good, you know. My son is uh, in New York and driving all over the goddamn place, and I'd be worried about him. Safe travels. Yes, yeah. But uh, other than that, you know, I'm good. I'm cool. Uh, My week was good i'm fasting we started ramadan so uh, this is like week two and a half kind of like so Mm. i'm now i'm naturally used to not eating um i maybe had a kind of a slip up where the other day i had to have some breakfast (laughs) at a different time but other than that uh, ramadan's been good i've been doing different things we have a donation thing in my house where we're going to donate at the end of Ramadan, and then we've been trying to make sure we go and visit the sick, help the elderly, and things like that. So I got to take care of one of my brothers who is really, really sick. And it was just really emotional because um, looking at him, he looks so much like my father. Mm -hmm. And it was really heartbreaking to see what he's going through and how he's very strong, though. He's, He's going through it with the greatest of ease. You know, he has his moments, but Um, it's important to support those people when they're going through something, you know, and some people that you can't support, you know, pray for them. Sometimes people can't get along or you don't want to see them go through that. So pray for them and, you know, do that. But my brother, man, um, it was good to have him around and, you know, my kids and to look at him and take them and cater to them and just be there and be supportive of them. But it was really hard to see in the end because he just looks so much like my dad. And it's just I didn't want to see him go through that. You know, right. did you get any gifts? <clears throat> yeah, I did. And and really, uh, I got a gift. <clears throat> I'm a Muslim also, and I celebrate <laughs> Ramadan. <laughs> but I can't do the fasting because you know I'm diabetic and I have you know a few other little health problems and stuff like that. So I have to do a zakat, For which sure. is I have to you know do charity and do something for somebody. And hey, you I do that anyway. So, you know. I would say I'm almost That's there. I'm almost there. Where it's just the structure part is 
just you know <laughs> that's it's not it's, no 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 it's just not that it's not about the the religion it's just me i just i don't have the structure right now to to add anything else to my load and that's beautiful but, that's that's understanding yeah. yourself yeah that's, that's understanding me but i definitely respect muslims on every level my family is muslims and i try to do and we've been that way for yeah 40 years. i try to do things that you know well little things that they would <laughs> like that i do you know what i'm saying a lot so, yeah. loves me so much here look after you too but i definitely sure. i'm definitely gonna buy my mom a big gift i don't know what it is i bought my sister something she did um i'm gonna tell you what it is zakat yeah but it, I, I but i think it's beautiful so yeah, my daughter's a Muslim for, for sure. sure. <laughs> yeah, Bella's a Muslim. That's so right. yeah, she'll, she'll tell you I don't eat pork and yeah. I don't do Christmas and all that type of stuff. She Christmas <laughs> Christmas is for suckers, anyways. <laughs> Why don't you tell me what I bought you? Um, my sister brought me a lovely uh, Himalayan sea salt rock block that you can cook and prepare food on, and it's like so tight. It's really good to cook on. It's healthy to cook on. It. It's just like a cutting um, block you can use. Oh, but, so but yeah, it was really nice. It's really nice. No, gift. for real, because and, um, if you pay attention to what your people is talking about, buy them something. She respects the fact that I'm healthy and I push like a herbalistic type of living. You yeah. know, I haven't ate chicken in a long time. I haven't ate chicken in almost a year in May. But I appreciate that because you were looking out for what I do and what I like. And yeah. you gave me something that fit my needs. Mama sure. asked me what did I want for my birthday, and I was like a juicer, you know, because I want to. Start juicing and selling it more okay. than uh, I want. So you have to buy her what she wants for sure. her birthday. Because you just go out and say, oh, you know, I'm a girl. Uh, uh, Material you get, girl. You get her she wants fuck? Chanel line, but she <laughs> wants. She said, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, you know. items. This bitch like items <laughs> in she the cart. Add some basket. Add some basket. And you gotta wrap it. Add cart. You have to wrap the shit. Yes, I love to break shit open. See, that's that weird shit. I can't. You have to wrap her gift and all that shit. I'm gonna send it through Amazon. And it was just great because. You look forward to, you know, and when she brung, when I got it, I was like, I can't wait to do something for her on it. You know what I mean? I want to. I love a lamb. Yeah. I wanted to make her something <laughs> real nice with it. So, yeah, for sure. Before we go any further, I just want to say happy birthday to DiCaprio. You know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My nigga is 26 there. years yeah, old shout out today. To <laughs> you, you know, we his Charlie's Angels. The we real ones. The him. black yeah. bunch of bitches. <laughs> shout out to Charlie, man. This is the most color he got in his life. <laughs> it's us. You feel me? And we ain't the color purple. Oh it? my god, no! <laughs> that bitch right. Oprah can never. I do not fuck with Oprah. <laughs> Oprah can and choke you know on the Oprah. Emily never did. All this new shit that she she's can going choke through. on the Oprah. Fuck that shit. bitch. Emily never did. Her, I don't like Oprah. her and her homegirl Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and Madea or Madea, whatever the fuck. Murdia. Yeah. No, I don't just, like yeah. I don't like them. Yeah. He bought both them bitches a Rolls Royce. I go fuck about them. I Rolls Royce fuck with Monique. Yeah, I guess what I'm gonna give y'all a fun fact before we get into this bullshit. <laughs> I know almost every word to every Parker sh episode there is. <laughs> I do. <She> do. <laughs> That's fucking tight. I do, nigga. She do. That's I tight. Um, she also know you a dummy, bitch. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love what she does. Why was I calling her Alice? That's not her. Was that her name? <laughs> no, her name was Precious. No, but what was the mom's name? Alice. She Monique. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, what was the mom's name in the movie? I thought it was she Alice. Was monster. <laughs> Casey. Yes. Oh, no. That bitch was acting like Tukey. <laughs> Not I can't too. think of that name. She said, don't let him break me. <laughs> I was like, bitch, clear the shit out your throat and then tell her. <laughs> bitch. Daily news. Beyonce oh, no. releases Cowboy Carter. She releases the visuals, at least, she, of the full album cover and display. Um, she had on beads with bangs, kind of like uh, another artist. And she decides to name it Cowboy Carter. She got a lot of flack from a few artists. One in particular that really ripped her apart was Azalea Banks. Azalea said some harsh things. She said even she was a man. She said that it was tasteless. It was um, a She said name. Beyonce was a man? Yeah, she oh, said it was yeah. a tasteless <laughs> thing. She said it, Beyonce was doing like a pick-me thing with the white people, um, begging to be in another um, genre of country and all this kind What's of stuff. 
that bitch is Azalea Banks is a real low down bitch for real. She's the same bitch that was talking about. She had them DJ surfing. DC Young Fly's baby mom when she died. Yeah, she's sick. Somebody should whoop her. You remember, ass. You remember I that? Will, oh, if y'all pay me, remember when the jail. girl died from having surgery? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she talked about her so bad. She talks about a lot of people. Azalea Banks okay, is Okay, she better an evil... watch Wendy Williams see what the fuck happened to that bitch. She's an evil, evil spirit. I can say that. And Azalea Banks... Banks shit. And Azalea Banks, you. you are ugly. As fuck. You, you are, are an ugly bitch. I don't care what, what and, you get done. I don't, I, don't, I don't say women I'll, is ugly, but... I'll you know, assault you guys. She's, <laughs> she's bottom of that, of that crab bucket. Yeah, she just <laughs> looks grimy as fuck when she don't... And you gotta brush your wig, and don't be trying yeah. to look so crazy. Yeah, you starting to look like Oprah Winfrey yeah, and, 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 and Whoopi Goldberg. I don't know. Why you want to look so old? Yeah, bitch. And you I don't understand. You the black woman. But... And, that wasn't hate. Yeah, because the beehive, they'll come for your bitch ass. But I do want to say this, Beyonce, <laughs> before Sheila finishes. Ooh, that, it is in Texas. Ain't no hold em. I hate that song, bitch. It reminds me of white motherfuckers who smoke cigarettes on their front porch. It reminds me of I, people in Reno at the slot machine. I don't like that song. I ain't never like country. I, this is what I say about Beyonce. I'll say that she's showing how dope she is to where she can go in any lane. She's showing her real artistry, how she could go okay. from hip hop to because the Renaissance was like a gay album to me. No offense to the LGBTQ. Yeah. No, that was definitely EPL music. Yeah, that was like you know, kind of for the gays okay, well, and the parade. I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there. I <laughs> I don't fuck with none of it, so <laughs> I feel it. But I, I don't want the beehive to be swarming my motherfucking car when I, I get like ready to Beyonce. go outside. I'm a Beyonce fan. I, I think like she's Beyonce. Kind of, she's the Tupac to me. But Mama, you do like Beyonce song, now Me, Myself, know, and I. I. Do I like Beyonce? That song, Me, you Myself, can, and I. You, you like, like her? You like her talent a little. Yeah. Jay-Z is your nigga. I just don't like the idea that y'all blow all that motherfucking smoke She's up talented. Ass. She is talented. She's she man, she, talented than the... Uh, uh, say who? Cardi B. The girl. Who? What uh, bitch? What's her name? Cardi B. The new one we were just talking about. Lotto. Lotto. They Lotto, my mama love you. <laughs> Lotto, please give my mama a deal. I'm about to say, please put her in your video. Yeah, shit. Have mama call me Lotto, Lotto remix. <laughs> shit. Uh, she's, I don't know she's, what y'all talking about. Lotto is a bitch. Lotto's here to stay, for sure. She's not going nowhere. Yeah. She's one of the illest. But, I mean, that shout out to JT, too. My Cinderella City. Cinder City. City Cinderella. City Cinderella. Lotto, Lotto put Beyonce <laughs> to sleep on that. Them C's is yeah, fucking us up. And then here come Carly B. That's my baby, too. She gotta stop rapping and like Carly, that. And Carly, we'd have been by your house four or five times when we come to Atlanta. We, we gotta always drive by your damn house. We we gotta just get her to stop rapping like Offset, and she'll be fine. Like Dr. Sue. Yeah, she'll be fine. But Erica Badu, I'm gonna say this before I'm done with Beyonce. Erica Badu said that she felt as though that it was a lot of similarities in style that Beyonce have been choosing lately that mimic some of the work she's done in the past, like wearing the big hats for Why a concert. Why can't be homage? Well, well, you know, That's I, I, I don't, it's not that I Why don't can't like be paying homage? Beyonce. I don't want that to go out, but. You know, I you like Erica think she's so bomb. Like, you know, she's just as average like everybody else. Do you like Erica Badu? Except for Lotto. Lotto. Do you like Erica Badu? Lotto look like a winner. Yeah, I like Erica Badu. She's old school. That's old school. That's what I'm saying. Erica Badu, I don't think it's more of copying. I think it's yeah. paying homage. Just like when she dressed up as Lil' Kim for Halloween. Lil' Kim embraced that. Beyonce I, dressed up as Little Kim for Halloween, and it was paying and homage. And she did Tony Braxton oh, real good. She, yeah, she it's paying up, homage. Okay. I don't think it's See, when copy. they do stuff like that, I could get into them. But when they just stand somewhere and don't say a motherfucking word to a fan or nobody, and they so, oh, my I God. I think Beyonce has a hard time being Beyonce because that's, like, a big thing to be every it's day. It's hard for me to be, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can't be me every day. <laughs> I gotta be the next I can't be the bitch me. that I am. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we got that out the way. A lady by the name of Jessica Petway passes after being misdiagnosed. She had stage three cer uh, cervical cancer mm. in 2023, and she was misdiagnosed with fr uh, fibroids mm -hmm. in 2022. Mm. So rest in peace to her and um, blessings to her family. Hopefully they can heal. You guys and, get hearts. Yeah. 
We wish you the best with your journey of healing. Um, she was an incredible influencer on Instagram. She had a great, a lot of great things she shared with us about makeup and all things like that. And it's just so unfortunate that she was misdiagnosed. And I shared that story because as black women, you know, sometimes we scared to go to the doctor and we scared to hear anything about ourselves when it comes to being, um, I mean, it's the, the it's master the, it's is the telling me. Sheila. I just seen on uh, TV the other day where a doctor, he was uh, buying the stuff for the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But he wasn't giving them the full doses that they need. Really? Yeah. And he killed a lot of people, died, and their family was, you know. Uh, wow. You know, because he was skimming off the top, mm -hmm. you know, and giving them little tiny doses of you it. You got to think, especially in the black community. And he was, he did $19 million worth of that. Of damage. Yeah. I believe it. And he had, he lived in a big, beautiful home, drove Rolls Royces and had, you know, money and they lived really good because he was skimming off the top from chemotherapy medicine. As wow. say, for instance, if I went in and I needed a 30, he, he give me a 10. <laughs> I know about peace. Oh, and that's just, that's beyond anything. You know, and they had another bitch, she was skimming off the top. Right. Right? So, like, is this what we got to deal with now? You well, know, you know, like, years ago, we didn't have that type of shit, baby. These doctors now. Our doctors had character, integrity. <laughs> they didn't do that type of stuff. No, they didn't, but. <laughs> Only a little bit of few might have done something slick. But to. But to give a motherfucker a 10 right. when they need a 30 is insane. Crazy it's, work. It's hurtful. But it's just sickening. It's fast. People can look oh to God. where it was, I believe it was the Midwest. Um, I want to say it could have been somewhere in St. Louis or somewhere like that where it was a doctor who was misdiagnosing black women with breast cancer mm. and giving them mm. chemo and they were dying. Mm. And they had nothing wrong with them. Mm. So, mm. Wow. you know, we can that go... Is that is really crucial. We can go far back as to the 40s and the 50s when they were giving women hysterectomies, black women and hysterectomies. They and they you would know? ask you how many kids you got. And you say, oh, I got eight. And no, they will, you won't have mm, nine. Yeah. And we could go back to the 90s when niggas was giving niggas 10s instead of 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. You ain't cracked. That was yeah. me. That was me. <laughs> Skimming off the top. Pooh Shiesty said he was charging niggas for cake, but they was really getting shake. So it's all the same shit. Correct. You know? You're Correct. Wearing a dime instead of a 20, baby, that was right. me. And they come back and eyeball. Me. They I'm say, sorry. when you go like this and open your hands and you shit ain't, you, look, you gotta know what's you going can't on. You do that in my yard, though. I'm bet, just saying. You, bitch, you better not look at that motherfucker. Since Take we're going back did. decades. <laughs> You take what the fuck you get. Right. Yeah, so protect yeah. your Shout out, shout protect out to your Harriet. <laughs> protect your pockets right. and your health. Right. That's all I can say. Yeah, you better not look oh at it. Oh, my goodness. Um. <laughs> We also have tuned in to a really great documentary that was played this week, uh, Quiet on the Set, about Dan Schneider and uh, another guy, Brian Peck, I believe his name was. And he was, um, Dan Schneider was the producer behind some great Nickelodeon hits. But he had I didn't a watch that. I don't know why. You didn't watch it because it's more of my era and lightweight Is Emily's the, uh, too, Pretty Peas. Kids, they was doing shit. Oh, no. yeah. yeah, it's the, it was the... I, he did. Watch the type of I come from Hey Dude, that was at mom's house. But then it once I got older, it was the um all that. You yeah, know. I watched it for Amanda. I watched all that with Amanda, Keenan and Kills. I used to watch Amanda Bynes and yeah. all that. So Toy 101 and all that. Dan luck, Schneider, he was the producer behind it, but Dan had a real big perversion going on with a lot of the roles and some of the acting they had done. And it was a great episode. It was a great documentary. I suggest everybody to watch it because we all want our children to be blowing up from YouTube or we even want to be famous right. from YouTube. And it comes with a lot. It comes with a lot of, you know, um, just sexual, nasty, creepy, de demonic really? type of stuff. Yeah, it was really, really I, disgusting to see. And I just want to say this. It's the same thing with R. Kelly. For sure. Uh -huh. It's the same parents. You guys are all saying you didn't see it. It didn't happen. Or I mean, not saying it didn't happen, but you're saying it happened, but you didn't know. You, you wasn't aware. You right. wasn't allowed to be around when certain stuff was happening. It's all the same shit. I just, I just want to say this. It ruined a lot of people's 
fucking childhoods. I would say that. And their mental health. And their mental health. Um, I just, I, I know Disney's coming. I know Disney's coming. It makes me think about Orlando Bloom. But y'all not gonna fuck up that's so raven Bloom. for me. And sister, sister. <laughs> and good luck, Charlie. You're not gonna ruin that for me. You're not. <laughs> well... Yeah, uh, them white girls. I do. I love all of them. That's my show. Because Emily's an incredible actress. That's what I do. I like all of those. The thing about um, the Dan Schneider situation, when he, and I want to make this clear to black people in our community, uh, it was a black boy on that show, and he, his mother was against a lot of the things they was doing. You know, Chris, she was... Chris Macy's... Um, mom. Yeah, she was correcting him and saying, no, I don't like that. Or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's a trip how... Us women, especially as black women, we have this great intuition. We have this great insight on things, you know, and she was very intuitive mm -hmm. about what they was doing and how they was doing it. And she, I was, to say on that. she was a sharp mama. And here's the cold part about it. She was so sharp. It caused them to wear, hey, she doing too much. She's saying through this shit, get rid of him. I got something to say about that. And that and he and guess what? He was tripping on his mama like, bitch, right. you didn't let this go bad for me. And they what? fell out. I got something to Girl. say about that. So that wasn't God Chris Macy's damn. mom. But I do want to say this. She knew what some weird shit was happening. And her son was so focused on getting her out of the ghetto True. that he wanted her to shut the fuck up and let whatever happened happen so that he could get her out of the ghetto. But his mama said, nah, 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 nah. Ain't, It ain't worth your sexual... It ain't, it ain't worth it. Yeah. And he was one of the niggas that didn't get tickled, okay? Right. True. And that's so amazing how, you know, uh, he was on the other hand trying to make sure right. she get up out the ghetto. And, and he, she protected... You know, it was just... That's, and, that's and she, on the other hand, is saying, <laughs> but I don't want you to, you know, to go through all that and do all now that. Now, here's where it gets steamy. Get and, and I just want to say this as an example. I don't want to get off subject, but... The same thing that just happened to my son. He was supposed to be here with us today, but he had to go to football camp. He asked me, can the coach come pick him up and take him home? <laughs> Nigga, no. <laughs> <laughs> you will not be getting in no Coach Carter's car. You won't be getting in no Coach John Wayne Gacy's car. You're going to get in somebody's car that I know. Because that's when it happens, and that's okay. for real. Now I'm going to tell you the story of Drake Bell. Nigga, he no. was... Um, and a child actor, and he was him and his father, and he was close with his dad. Oh, his dad sent him up. You know, his dad made him get these great positions and everything. And a guy by the name of Brian, mm -hmm. Brian is on the set, and he works with the children, and he's the one that you leave the child with, yep. right? So mm. Brian is a cold motherfucker, and you ought to be flogged. You ought to really be. You ought to be having some. Nah, impaled. they should hawk you he in should, your back. You he know should what I mean? be impaled. Yeah, he should be impaled. He should be, but he should be as an example to what happens to you yeah. when you do that. For sure. Now he was getting comfortable with him, and this is how he got him. He turned that boy's daddy against him. He, he said, your daddy wants your money. He doesn't want to help you. And and the daddy broke down crying. And guess what the daddy said? I'm for whatever my son wants. And and, <clears throat> and, and he, he, he became so comfortable with that man, he started spending the night at his house. Yeah. And he started molesting him. He, he sodomized him. He was he putting all foreign objects yeah. in him. He was doing all these nasty, nasty, disgusting things to this young boy. And he was 15. And when you look at his show starting to evolve on Nickelodeon, you just see the torment inside of him because he's not really as happy as the other kids. He just has this blank look on his face. Mm -hmm. And when his daddy found out that the dude went to jail, and that it was a case being brought against him. He was saying, that's good for him. I, I, I hope the motherfucking son he did that to, they get you. He didn't know it was his own son. Oh, Lord. Yeah, and his dad, ha his dad has battled with that for the past 20 years. Yeah. And, and I would have battled with it, too. I would have shot him. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, he would have got that. You know, a long time ago, that, that, that brings back when Sheila said, I would have shot him. Mm -hmm. They had a white girl that. Uh, some man had been molesting her son. I think he was, how old was that little boy? He was five or something. Remember? And she went in the courtroom. Yeah. Yeah. She That's shot good his ass in the courtroom. Yep. They made her go to jail because <clears throat> she tested positive for drugs or something. Crystal meth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But she had the right idea. She's the bitch that made him put the 
uh, thing in the court when you the walk barricade. through and see if you have a gun the, uh, and all that. And I got accurate. so much respect for Actually, that. Actually, if I was uh, Drake Bell's dad and I found out that he had raped my son, I would have stuck something up your ass and yeah. roasted you like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> yeah. And I cut pieces of you off and fed you to the fucking and alligators. I gave a fuck what yeah. happened after that. I would have shot mm -hmm. him. I would have sure. I I I definitely have knocked mind. on his door or went and found him somewhere mm. and blew his mother. Because the way he out. manipulated the child to turn against the father, yeah. the things he did to lead up, he was praying it's on that boy so, all along. So it was just stuff sad. that goes on. That, oh, man. That I have a cold, know. you guys. I'm not on cocaine. <laughs> I, just, I have a cold. There's so much stuff that goes on. The people are not aware of, you know. You, Correct. You, you don't know what your daughter's going down to, you know, out. Speaking of that, uh, we have a friend that her daughter is um, handicapped. Okay. And she, you know, had walk on crutches and whatever. So she didn't have very many friends. So the one friend that she did have, you know, going to spend the night. Okay. Mm. So this nigga live in G Parkway, where his girl do. And when he come over there, he got this tight ass car and all that and everything like that. And he parks where he could walk out of the room and look in the, out the back window and mm. see if anybody's fucking with his car. And so that's what we thought he was doing. What he was doing was when the little girl's friend spent the night, he was going around back there fondling her. Oh, wow. Mm, he needs to be impaled. Now you you supposed to be going <laughs> to check on your car and you're in, you're in there fondling a little five or six year old little girl and her family beat the brakes off of his goddamn ass Do they should have I mean? pulled they should have hired some hyenas to eat him <laughs> that's what you know, i would in africa did. they used to have a pit where they have um if you crossed or did anything it was a the army women of, would get you the women would get you you would yeah. actually go into this pit and they would claw you they to would death. Beat oh you. no you nigga. don't want to get that's killed in sacramento too <laughs> That's in Sacramento, too. They will claw you. See, that's in our house, because us three would do some motherfucking something. You crazy terrible. as fuck. Let one of you niggas touch my son <laughs> and see what the fuck happened to you. It could be women, too. Let's make that clear. I don't and you know, like, what, women where, too. I don't care what's women between is, your legs. Women you are touch dirty. me to your mind or my women nieces and nephews. It's okay, a problem, bitch. Okay, where is it that we don't, you know, they don't have that coming and we, you know, we would go to jail for that? I, I, don't, I don't care where I go. I'm just saying, we shouldn't be able to go to jail for that. You're right, but, you know. The way I snatch that nigga's dick off like a <laughs> microphone out of somebody's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> and watch yeah. that nigga bleed out. <laughs> like That's some right. Kool-Aid. Because I believe in a tit for a tat. You kill my dog, I kill your cat. Uh, you touch my son's <laughs> back, and I'm going to break yours. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's get to the next uh, another, another thing about so it is, is <laughs> no, Dude, listen, shit, it's not killing the kids dead. have on their motherfucking face. You go, they're scared. I'm scared. That's, oh, that's what it gets We really got to change the me. subject. Um, I, I forgot the young man's name, but I do want to say something in regards to what you just said. A young man in San Bernardino, I believe he was autistic. He was about 11 or 12. He was just killed by the San Bernardino Police Department. Mm. He was shot three times. Times. He was an autistic child. He was um, very friendly and bubbly, and he had his moments of behaviors and things like that. I, I think it was some type of dispute or a meltdown he had where he had a stick in his hand. He meant no harm, no malice, but the police came, and not even three seconds of trying to engage or talk to him, they shot him and killed him. And he bled yeah, out in front of what? his family. And it's because... And what affected me the most about that is... I have an autistic son and sometimes he has behaviors and actually he's had a few behaviors in this last week where um, it's been hard to reel in. But I always cater to it as it's a growing pain because his birthday's coming up. But we just got to be a little bit extra fragile to people and their children, especially if you know that they have autism. And I shame on the police department. I think that should be something involved in training. I think they need to be investigated and they need to be in jail. Nobody else in jail. No, they have not. I think they are on leave. I don't well, even know if they're on that. Well, he's going to get something done to him, for sure. Sometimes, and we got to understand in a black community, you know, when shit like that happens, motherfuckers would be like, you know, you're going to get paid, though. The city going to pay you. And a nigga, <laughs> like, hold on. I done lost my whole life 
that I just had. You know what I mean? I just lost my child here. And no person, no black, we keep getting this black violence by these police. You feel what I'm saying? We got to learn to either train these niggas better or maybe denounce their whole operation. But if you just look at it, because the hospital. Is, yeah, the hospital treats they us don't, bad. They, them, them motherfuckers are smoking crack and they're doing dollies and mollies and they're doing meth and... And shit, and they're not doing their work, and they're guessing, and all kinds of shit. Cap, can, when you have a chance, can you find that the name of that young man? He was in San Bernardino. He was 11 years old. He was autistic. Mm. But mm. it's just so unfortunate, and we got to really, really, really... Is his name really, Ryan? Ryan, I can't think of the last name or something like that, but I'm going to make sure we get it right before the end of the night. But um, next on the list... Wait a minute. Speaking of sons... Okay. My son... I'm stage four kidney failure. He said, Mama, you can have my kidney. Oh. But I, I don't want I don't want his kidney. I don't want none of y'all kidney. I want you to live your life and you know, and I don't wanna I don't want that. Yeah. That's uh, why you no, I I, I don't want Uh bitch, kidney. you better take this Taylor Port infected ass <laughs> motherfucking kidney and get on. I, I know I that was a sweet gesture, but I don't want I cut of it out kidney. myself and hand it to you. <laughs> she will. And throw it on the table and say, now, huh? Even though it's a little black because <laughs> no, with the TP I, because black. See, I have diabetes and high blood pressure. And, it's all uh, good. I think everybody has high blood pressure, out. don't they? No. I have PTSD uh, pressure. Nigga, I have <laughs> PTSD. Back up a little bit. <laughs> I have. Come on, nigga. Please <laughs> leave me alone. Um, new slang that people have been using. They don't say no homo no more. You know, that's a gesture when What's you that? used to when you say something in a like a if men are talking and they say something sexual towards each other, they'd be like, no homo. Now they're saying no diddy. What do you think about that? Fits perfect to me. <laughs> you guys are just so on Diddy's penis. Let that man so run that motherfucker men. where he want to. I mean, you know, if he want to be gay, that's fine with me. I'll, I don't give a fuck. But he can fuck us, though. Well, I mean, yeah, shit. For some money. Did he call meal, me? I don't I do, do not straps. give a fuck about. <laughs> I do I can't stacks, poke you, nigga. Uh, I'll poke you. Long as you pay me. I can finesse you. I just can't undress you. I'm scary. I can undress you and dress you up, nigga. What you want to look like? A little East Oakland bitch? I'll dress you up, nigga. Please. I just don't give a fuck what he, you know, who he's I really think he probably want to dress like little kids. He want to go with I men and women at the same time. I don't care. Once again, I'm not on cocaine. So My nose up. is People just stuck behind the cold. Everything. They sleeping with grandmas and uncles and grandpas and all kinds of shit. That's true. I just think that it would be more accepting of him to be open and honest to say, hey, this is what I'm doing because you right. are misleading people about what you're doing and how, I mean, we don't need to that. know your dark secrets. We don't need to know, but you, I believe niggas with power and I mean this period, niggas, black men get power and they get freaky because they just can't control themselves. They have no self-control. But why would other men is what I... Because that... Because you got the, you got the right... Netta, you done been through so many out. bitches. You got to imagine. Imagine having four billion in your bank account. And you say... I, I might can't. fuck a goat. <laughs> Shit. Okay, well, I get that because I say the same thing. Shit, I if don't I say had, that. You know, they had a picture. I don't say nigga, that. No, they had a sports. picture of, uh, uh, what's that white bitch? Because you just want to see how freaky you could get? Nigga, it's not that. They I got the money, nigga. Two, uh, hit a, uh, hit a flip. Pretty black girls. Okay, his name is Ryan Gaynor. Gaynor. Ryan Gaynor. Now we about to talk see about some freaky shit. Ryan Gaynor. He's so tight. We love you, DiCaprio. Down. He don't care how tipsy I be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... We gonna let Diddy be Diddy. Leave Diddy let alone. Let Dicky be. Have you seen the look Diddy. on his face? <laughs> Have you seen him look lately? He defeated. Like, beating him down, to girl. For what? My thing is. Did you see Ice Man? I love him too. I love men too. It's not a okay. This is my other thing. Just tell us that you like the Yeah, yeah just tell us. Fucking business. Okay. He was doing some wild shit. Tell him what you do. What do I do? Okay, well then shit. What look at my do? hands. But look, this is how I feel about it. If y'all gonna come what at Diddy... What have you done, bitch? <laughs> if y'all gonna come at Diddy, please make sure you get the Dan Schneiders, you get the Brian Pex, because Brian went and went to Disney. And that nigga Jason that was working on Nickelodeon. Yeah, you, you gotta wrote, get these You wrote in Gianni's book, you wrote 
something so weird. Yeah. You wrote, I love you guys so much that I'm willing to work for free. Oh, God, you damn. should have known right there that Shit, that nigga like teenage that. meat. Give me a Jamba Juice or something. Because <laughs> guess what? As he much as I have kids, do that, I ain't doing shit yeah, I was for free. Like, I wouldn't have fucked with it for free. Not for the ass. I can't do nothing for the free. For the finances. Or for the fun. You guys got to stop talking about who's effing who and what not. Because first of all, whatever P, P. Diddy do, it's none of our business. And True. not only that, he have enough money to do what's never the fuck he want to do. The only reason why I want and something to be held to accountable money, for him. You already know what's up. It has nothing to do with his sexual preference. I want him to be held accountable for Tupac Shakur. Yeah. I want him now to be I held accountable now that for what he did to Cassie. Yeah. Because that wasn't right. First his, pop. His, then we could get to Cassie. I see his mama said, Biggie's mama said that, you know, he really didn't like Biggie. Or he was trying to do something to him. Right. Something. A lot of dark things that come out and the truth is uh, but you know we're in a time There's some dark shit coming out bro. But but that's this that's the only thing that we can honor about social media because now all these I just want to know if that stories. Jay Z stuff is real. I don't think so. And even if it was, I wouldn't entertain <laughs> but it. Why? Why you don't put it past him? I love Jigga. I do too. I love him more I love than Jigga. all of them. I don't give a fuck Killing about 50 that cent. Alma nose motherfucker. Cent. Y'all, y'all love. I don't 50 care. Cent? Smoking high, throwing. I, high, throw I just seen a video of Fifty Cent. I got something I to say he about was like, 50 I want to thank Vivica for wearing that dress, and she was looking just like Uncle Billy when he. <laughs> when she I mean, Fifty. Call me Daddy. I you shit. <laughs> I love Fifty Cent. I think that she was looking just lot. like a Osby when she was like. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> they go get you. Oh my. Then just call me 50. And I don't like when Rick Ross said she was broke and all that shit while he dancing. I got around. something to say about 50, though. R Rick but Ross dancing around in them motherfucking next? furs. On them and Jerry shit. Springer furs. Shit. With all them motherfucking cars and shit. You still a real boss, though, baby. Cardi B has released a new record. And JT is flying solo, as we said before. JT is the city Cinderella. What do you think about that? You fuck with Lotto. We know you love Lotto. You fuck with JT. I do. I fuck with Nikki. Shout out to Nikki Sherman. Oh, my God. You got to get up out of here. I fuck with, <laughs> I fuck dogs, with Nikki Minaj. Nah. And I love that she got Monica on the, on the tour with her. I think she did oh, that for her. I think God. she did that for security because Bonnet. Because she Monica can't fuck is, with Lotto because Lotto would have Sure Monica is up. not the bitch to fuck with. I that like, bitch got like good. Monica. Monica is one of the illest fashionistas. She's the most yeah, flyest yeah, chick where, in the world. Where? I don't see her. Fly Monica be dope. fly as fuck. Monica come dope every time. I ain't seen she's it. She's a real stepper when she come out. She, she don't is. be playing with her gear. She's really one you of the You know who really? she remind me of? Yeah. She remind me of Smoke. She's so calm and yeah. cool and collected. Uh, uh, smoke and shit. ain't that. <laughs> Yeah, oh that's the God. point. Mm -hmm. Smoke ain't that. Smoke could get loose. Once again, I'm not on cocaine. <laughs> no. <laughs> smoke is not that. She, get that tissue. She, she's I got that crackhead cool, tissue in my purse now. You know, for show. Show you. You remember back in the 90s, the crackheads would have a uh, tissue like this balled up in their purse? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. I, I got to get some new tissue. Cut it out. <laughs> Another I didn't thing. know so much about the crackheads. Uh, well. I don't want to say. How does she know? I don't want to <laughs> say. Y'all ain't going to call like, CPS whoa. on my you, mama. You supposed to be a little girl. How you supposed to know about some motherfucking Baby, crackheads? I might have been a little girl, but I have ass. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, man. So what do you think about Cardi B and her new song? Did you hear it, Mom? I, if I heard it, I didn't even know it was new or something. Like, like I think I, I think I heard something. The other day, like a coach bag, baby. This ain't what you want. What do you think about it, Pretty V? She said like she a right. coach bag. She just was, I don't know, she was just, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a diss. I don't know, but she was just <laughs> rapping like Dr. Susan. But I'm with her. I wouldn't fuck with, I don't fuck with them coaches and MLK or whatever that man. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> Sheila and my mama both have MK purses I and pub jackets. I had Michael Kors. That is crazy. This bitch that. has that Brenda's Got a Baby Michael puff Gordon coat by MK. You're a fake ass person because you know you oh, do. Fake ass bitch. Crazy. I got a $3,000 motherfucking Gucci, baby. I don't have to. Listen. Girl, yes, you have that. Here. Mama, you don't have that long candy man, uh, Michael Kors. Uh, I don't. Tell her, I don't have no Michael Gordon. You have. Oh, you, she, my mama got, these hoes for the fight. My mama got a candy man. My mama man. ain't got a motherfucking thing. Mama got a Gucci. My mama, got, my mama, mama has an inspector gadget jacket <laughs> by Michael Kors. 
That and is Sheila not true. Has I, a see, I go to Lane Bryant's baby. Puff coat by Michael Kors. No, motherfucker. No, it's the Lane Bryant's coat. That is not LB. <laughs> I that got all my shit from my clients. Stop it, nigga. <laughs> they are so lying. Stop it. You know I don't fuck with no Michael Kors. This was before the E-D-D-D-D. <laughs> no no, 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 no. In 2000 that. and, no, 20 So you ain't never owned nothing Michael Kors? I have it. Exactly. Be started for me. That when we jacket. Was it. When we was out okay, there busting. Okay, I don't play. have no micro Recipes Mama, to be you in have Chirac, to, Chicago. Real nigga, be Chirac recipes. My mama has a toe length Candy corn jacket for Michael That was corn. when Salah was six months. Now you hear that. I Michael Kors him. was in the Art and Mall. <laughs> <laughs> My mama put that jacket on and looked just like The Undertaker. <laughs> Y'all think I'm... Y'all know this bitch is lying. Toe length. You hear that? Ain't that about a bitch? Charles, your plate is got to have my motherfucking toes is what I want to know. Charles. That's what I want to know. Why I got to have it to my toes? Charles. And then Sheila red. cut her pump coat I mean, Emily so knows she lied. So can lay on it. Oh, my God. They lying. They lying. <laughs> Honey, I would hey. never. <laughs> and then when we got EDD, my mama threw her long-length wallet of MK in Sheila's fire pit so it could burn. What the fuck? Emily, Get out. Is, Emily is just lying. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> he can't get her. He's scared. Anywho, um, back to it. I, for the record, I like Coach, the bait collection. I do like Coach. I Coach don't is like, cute. I don't fuck Coach, Coach is cute for young girls. MCM's cute for young girls. No. You don't even own nothing that's Coach. I do. I don't. I don't fuck with that. Sheila, that's for, that's, Sheila is such a bitch. That's for anti I like I don't fuck with and that. Coach Collection. They got that MK. I stepped that's up, what they did. Gucci. I don't wear MK. Louis, baby, I don't do all that. Uh-uh. <laughs> Mama knows she got that. No, I don't. Ooh. Mama got Gucci, Louis, and all that kind of stuff. You name it. It. Mama got that soul food jacket. <laughs> one, one thing I don't have is, you ladies out there, I don't have the fake replica Van Cleef jewelry. That's what I don't wear. I don't wear but that. But that shit, 30, 40 bands, yeah. I know y'all ain't Yeah, doing I don't that. have that. I'm not, I never wanted that bad. I had where I gotta wear the face shit. Lucky yeah. Charms, Van Cleef. Yeah, and we could talk but about how like Dream she, was wearing that 15 years ago. And but, I don't you know. like how she said, Foot on neck, can't breathe. That was George Floyd. I don't like that. Cardi. Oh, I never thought oh, of it. No. I don't like that you said that. Cardi. Are you serious? Yes, she did say that. that. Yeah, MK. <laughs> she said that about my baby. She didn't say George Floyd, but I just kind of. That's the nigga that they had on his neck for nine minutes and killed him. Yeah. I know, but that's what I got from oh, him when she, she was she, like, she, foot on neck, can't breathe. She like, rapped just like, oh, foot on that's neck. That's why I don't like. I don't it's like, like Dr. Seuss, like green eggs <laughs> and them. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Rest easy, baby, because, oh, Lord. They just what you think about the... JT? She going on a tour. Cindy Cinderella. I'm, hey, hey, sometimes you're just too dope for a group. You know what I'm saying? You got to fly True. solo. True. I love JT. I thought she was who the is more that? talented one. I don't even know who she is. The City Girls. They got that song. What's that song? They got some songs. Mama, you know oh. you was dancing to that song. Emily just <laughs> Kiki. Kiki. lying on me. <laughs> Mama liked that song when they was like, I don't work jobs, bitch, I am a job. That's what you said, Ma. Oh, she Emily, got, if you don't knock it off. I think she got a song coming out with our guy, Skilla Baby, though. She got a song coming Skilla out with Uncle Baby. Luke. Oh, God. I love Skilla. Don't do that. You get booted. Don't do that. Not oh, with Skilla. She don't know me, but she keep on calling me Trey Huh? Huh? Get booted by who? Huh? I can't believe I got Girl, rich friends. Skilla Baby and Daddy and... Them me. niggas hacks. Girl, now if we Ain't start saying, harder than the beehive. Fuck Frankie Beverly and Weinstein's and Kristen. <laughs> yeah, the Williams beehives and... that come for a bitch. <laughs> I have to Be have a gun, have my gun out when I go to my so car and all Frankie, that shit. Frankie Beverly, they are actually this will be their last farewell tour. Yeah, People will ever see them again. You don't want to go? go? You don't want to go? Go where? To see him, Frankie Frankie Beverly. Where am I gonna see him at? Oakland. Yeah, I should. I sure don't want to go see. That should be coming up real soon. Probably <laughs> like May or something. Let's yeah, take her. I yeah, see Frankie Beverly. Because when we took her to see Anita, we're not going to talk about that <laughs> next. Next, uh, let's take her to see that though. That Messy nice. Marv is out. <laughs> Messy Marv is out. I don't like that somebody said Messy Marv look like a lesbian. This is on I don't my like shirt. That. This is the top of the shelf, baby. What Prince. is it? Who is it? Prince. Yeah. Oh. 
Kendrick Lamar made a great um, f- verse with this Metro Boomin' and Future song he did. And he said, I Prince outlived Lamar. Mike Jack. It was a really, if you have time, go listen I to that record. Prince. Oh, my God. Kendrick got a hold That's of them niggas. He were a raspberry beret. I really, really yeah. uh, Prince had a lot was of the respect one. for Prince. Yeah. He was. He was talented. Yeah. He was. He if was you freaky. Ask, if you ask talented. Bella, my daughter, if you ask Bella how... Prince died. She's gonna tell you he OD'd. <laughs> Ooh. Oh man! That's well, right. That's so really back did. to what I said. Messy Marv's out. So yeah. Messy's home. So hopefully we can get an interview. We can get a lot of things from Messy. Who you know? is that? Messy Marv. Big big uh, square bitches can't stand me. Playing with my nose. You know that's the one. Square bitches can't stand me. Yeah, that's the one right Watching there. Watching TV. Okay. I mentioned Messi because we have to learn when Messi was out before. You know he was at a low point in his life and he was being um, mistreated by a lot of the fans and people and other artists. You know that's fucked up. It was, and he his said mental some health. things. He had poor mental health. He said some things that were not right. And instead of lifting the brother up and trying to get him some help, a lot of people just dogged him and hurt him and made it even worse and he just had such a downfall and it was live on camera for people to see whether he was walking down the street you know they just totally just ruined his I legacy somebody did show us yeah him tweaking or yeah something. they just yeah. did him so bad but it's um great to know that he has really good people behind him like my my guy juice and just fighting for him and wanting to see a change in the brother and wanting to get him lifted up into his Respected legacy honor that he deserves. Right. So shout out yeah. to Juice and, and the, the whole get catalog paid. is immaculate. Yeah, we're everybody not gonna, loves Messi. We, we love Messi Marv. I, you know, let me tell you about. You know what I mean? I could. T- I had a, the promotional time of the world with Messi, me and Rock. You know, uh, second and third letter. Yeah, shout out to T Nutty. You know, yeah, we had, we had the best time with Jay Diggs. You know what I'm saying? That's a real nigga. Right when we there. went to his book release. Yeah, we went to his book release. And, and he took a picture with me. Yeah, so we want to make sure that this is what we're doing. We're not here to discredit these brothers. We want to uplift our brothers and uplift the legends. And we don't want to talk about yeah, street yeah, shit uplifting. and who's telling and who's this, that, and the third. You know, you niggas got to pick something better to talk about. But shout out to Mess. He's home and we look forward to it. You I niggas is care. telling about who's telling, but telling every. Everybody but your kids. Good morning. And good night. And telling that bitch what she can do with them stamps. You niggas. I want you men to stop that. You niggas is doing your children. You niggas are doing so much telling, but not no responding to them text messages (laughs) of your kids telling you you hungry. hungry. You niggas is just a trip. But that's the end of that. And women too. You do it too. I also have some. Let me go to it. Y'all pardon me while I take a puff of my uh, Slap of the week. Who do you have? This is my medicine. My slap of the week? I think... Oh. I think I'm going to do Never Imagine Again by Future and <laughs> Little Dirt. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to do that one again. That's my shit. It, it actually... You know what it is? It's, that song gives me all the motivation in the world in the morning to get up to go do hair for six to seven hours a day. That's right, being on your feet. Somebody mm, tell you yeah. to get them hookah shoes that I be wearing. All those hakas. Yeah, he's maca chakas. Uh, how to return looking. <laughs> and I'll get them. Because <laughs> them motherfuckers, is, when y'all see me in them old white red shoes, nigga, they 200. Don't, I don't. I, I, need I be on cloud mind. nine. I really got to wear them because I have plantar fasciitis, but I will still step it. on you hoes. Uh, believe that. Foot on neck, haka. <laughs> Haka Peach. <laughs> My slap of the week is, like I said, the song with Kendrick Lamar. His verse was, I just love it. I'm a hip hop head. It was, um, the song is called Like What I Think or Like That. And it's with Metro Boomin and Future and Kendrick Lamar. I liked it because he was really kind of like getting in his 40 bag. He paid homage to Be Legit and E40. And I love Bela and 40. And know. he said he was uh, respecting Ramadan. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So that's what I liked about it. I like the fact that Kendrick said it ain't no big three it's big me nigga you know so um let him know something he kendrick is i like the fact that he still like it as a sport you know he is still battle you and talk about you niggas he ain't trying to click up you know and he's a talented brother he's a great great visionary and got some great ideas him and keem they they really fucking with it shout out to them i don't do niggas wearing barrettes so Mm. you know i don't give a fuck how much you're throwing that's right Kit Kat clubs or the hosts. What's your slap of the week? Well, my slap of the week is uh, I, they don't have a slap of the week. That's my son Omar and Rosalind. Okay. They don't have slaps, but you know they some 
slappy motherfuckers, you know. <laughs> My son Rasan is driving truck, <laughs> and he is doing so well. That's what's up. Alhamdulillah. Safe travels, bro. Show of the week. Who do you have? Oh, Lord. I'm back with Grey's Anatomy. Are you? Season 12. Mm. I did all the first 10 seasons. It took me like three months to watch them, but... Damn. I'm about mm. to get back on it. I'm back on it right now. I'm with, with my nigga uh, Karev and uh, all them. What's yeah. your show of the week, mommy? True Crime. Okay. Y'all want to hear my show of the week? What is it? Actually, it's my show of the week, but I'm disappointed in it. Pornhub. BMF. <laughs> she said Pornhub. BMF. I'm disappointed in it. Oh, Black uh, Man. Uh, woman. I read that book. I know, but the show with uh, Lil Meech is starting to get on my nerves. It's starting to get bootsy. The it's starting to get pop. too soap opery. It's, it's just too you, many you know that famous 150 people guy. looking weird. That's it. The 150 guy? Yeah, I'm him? just... Okay, the mama... Me. Who? Oh, oh, you're talking about raising Canaan. I don't the fuck lady, with that. Yeah. The lady who that, that bitch is, he got being the mom. That he got yeah. that bitch is on. I heard that's a good show, but you know, I can't watch too I, much I'm of this shit. I'm gonna be honest with you, that show was kind of cool, but it wasn't it was BMF, I can't watch it. He got too many music celebrities. celebrities in it. Too many. Sweetie sucks. All that shit. That shit is just not for me. I and, and the, not, I didn't I love Sweetie, but not that. And it's that amazing how it. she thinks that she is like doing so much, but people really I, I liked Cash Doll in it for show. Sure. And I like the dude who played the bad guy. I'm I liked not a him. Cash doll fan like that. I, you used put, to love Cash doll. I don't like that. I used to like her, but she's like so. Not Meg, I don't mom. Y'all don't like Meg. Why? I, I, who? I Meg like a lot of the victim. Meg, the victim. <laughs> oh my. God. Meg's cool, but you know, if I had to choose, you your foot. I ain't, I ain't. I ain't, girl. No, she he didn't do it. Hey, I don't know who did it. If that she ain't, let hey, that, what you said, none of my business. Hey, <laughs> if she let that five pound pack of potatoes shoot her in her foot, that's on her. Motherfucker got a gun. He I weighed mean, way I, more than that, baby. Ooh, he got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> if he come at you with a gun, he got you, baby. I think, just like I said, I ain't gonna <laughs> like her till she till she replied to Nikki. <laughs> yeah, till she what? We're Although I didn't like Nikki saying you lying on your dead mama, lying on your dead she's mama. Lying on her dead mama. I lying mama. on your dead mama. I fucked with Nikki, but Girl, I can't fuck with that. Nikki that's me. I like Nikki. That was. Nikki that I don't know why. I, I like Carly. I like when she I said, "Get up on your good foot." Yeah, like she that. said, "Who oh, was like this bitch mean?" She that mean. bitch crazy. She reminds she me of this girl who wears 60-gallon cowboy hats <laughs> and wears gladiator clothes. But we're not going to talk about that. Go oh ahead. Oh, my God. Healthy Nicki Minaj ain't shit mental me. illness. What I wanted to talk about in healthy mental illness is generational curses, breaking generational curses. A lot of us are big on that, especially this time around in your family. You know, you got somebody that's big on trying to break anything. It's whether it could be a money thing with financing, whether it be mental health, whether it be, you know, sexual abuse, anything like that. So breaking a family curse, a generational curse is a repeating pattern of misfortune in a family. Some people can try to break the curse so much they end up making it worse. Um, you can have pressures to succeed, as we said. You can have pressures of, you know, um, sexual abuse, drugs, breaking a drug habit in a family, breaking alcoholism in a family. It's so many things that you can break with a generational curse. And do you anybody have any generational curses they feel like has been broken or trying to break well, in your family? All my people is gone. So, you know, the, the immediate people that are, that's here... You know, they're, you know, we would speak on their kids and they're too small to right. be yeah. involved in any of that type of bullshit, you know. And my kids, if y'all want to do that, then, hey, handle your business. But I'm just saying, no, I'm not saying, you know, do anything to someone, right. you know, but if you let someone do that to you, that's on you. Right. You know what I'm saying? But our, my grandkids is the best part of me. Right. So they're too little to be out, and we don't allow them to be in situations where they could possibly have something like that done, you know? Right. It would have to be someone really, really close to right. even get to them. Well, that leads me to, um, I know a certain situation where someone has been 
sexually assaulted their life, their whole life. So they're very strict on how they raise their children, right? Mm. And they are like determined to show another way and they're determined to make sure that that doesn't happen to them. Yeah. And they're true. doing a good job with that. However, they are in a relationship where the partner is more trying to break their generational curse by keeping them in sports and making them play sports and, mm. and doing it too, so much to where that person is overwhelming the child. Mm. You know, so you have it in some relationships where it's a mom and dad situation. You have one parent that's trying to break their own generational curse and you have another trying to break theirs. So it's colliding. It's colliding and it's causing a lot of chaos amongst the children. You know, so we got to keep those things in mind too. And then there's another situation where you have... People are focused on generational wealth. You know, that's another thing. Like our family, my grandfather was a boss baller, self-made, self-made businessman. Yes, my mother's father. And only thing I wish we would have gotten is she would have had been more educated on how to run finances because he had a lot of businesses. He had a lot of property. And when we went back later last year, I think over the summer and looked at some of his property, he lived in the avenues in San Francisco where he was, uh, the houses is worth 2.3 million now, you know, his own home, he owned apartment complexes. He had his own business on Divisadero. You know, he was very self-made and, we didn't pick up any of that. I mean, my, my older brother has for sure. but And my daddy said he wanted to come to California and go to San Francisco. <clears throat> That's all he ever dreamed of. Right. And it even <clears throat> happened to our grandmother to where, you know, my great-grandmother, me and Pretty P's great-grandmother Susie, she was very, very um, big in the community in Merced, California. She is one of the first contractors that ever touched that town. She is one of the biggest agriculture members. So we come for money, baby. Yeah. But so we didn't get none. <laughs> You're a damn liar. We we got it the harder way. Listen, my daddy did some work for a white man in Texas, <laughs> and the man didn't want to pay him. So my daddy choked him out and took the money that That's he owed him. <laughs> so when he got back to his mama, she said, boy, you don't have to get away from here. <laughs> that was That's our mama. mama. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to get away from here. <laughs> and that's when he left and went to San Francisco, well, where mom, he had dreamed all his take life. The game and make it white. And he got Uncle there Guy with five dollars and a busted radiator in a oh. raggedy car. Uncle Guy is. <laughs> with them tickets. And that motherfucker city. went from that to Rolls Royce. Look at Omar. Omar is that nigga. Uncle Guy has has one Omar is that nigga. Omar is in. that nigga, baby. My <laughs> daddy was a real millionaire. Omar is that nigga. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what Rose I'm saying. Rolls Royces. He had every car, brand new car every year. If sure. I want to break yeah. any generational curse, it would be just not getting caught doing anything <laughs> bad. <laughs> I'm going to kill somebody. I want to do all the scams. She <laughs> said, boy, you're going to have to get away from here. <laughs> I want to run just don't want to do that that time. And part. guess what? That time. That's the last time he ever seen his mama. Yeah. Man. And he came to California and yeah. like a dog on you bitch ass niggas. That's bitch. the last time he ever seen his mama. But we didn't gain anything from <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, though. I, I did. Mama, Mama took the game and made it white and had the Bobby in the wig. <laughs> so, Mama took the game and ran with that motherfucker. But, baby. you know, that's a, that's what I was saying. So <laughs> I don't want to break that. <laughs> no, we we are all self-paid and, and Oh, and my God. I want to break that. Right. <laughs> because Pretty P is, she doesn't work at anyone's salon. She's not sitting at that's and right. breaking her. Because right. that's due to the mental health in our family. And me, I don't have to work at no motherfucking McDonald's and all that other kind of shit, you know, sugardaddy.com. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? because I'm of the arthritis. I'm with everything but murder and prostitution, baby. <laughs> you know? She don't work with McDonald's because oh she has arthritis. Ain't nothing Spinal wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with prostitution. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Hump. Hey, Keep that. Say. You women, listen. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with prostitution, <laughs> baby. Believe that. Yes, it is. Yeah, there's if nothing you, wrong with it. Sucker, Even if you live to be 69 years if, old, baby, it's still a nothing wrong with it. Nigga, it's something wrong with it. You Mama, better go you, out there you and beat the blame yourself. You rub your hands like Birdman, like <laughs> you prostituted. We ain't gonna tell him what's going Ma on. Though. I was about to say, Mama wouldn't touch a trick to save us. Hey, but if, <laughs> if we was gonna break any generational curse curses, it would be those roaches. <laughs> That's the only thing. Roaches, roaches gave hey, me mental health that's problems. That's the only thing. And them burn spoons. I don't want none of that at that's my That's why team. I don't fuck with cereal. Yeah. And they know. 
I don't oh, fuck with oh, cereal. Oh, like these food. bitches that, here, that, they. I they are just cereal. so, oh my oh, God, you know, they are the haters. I want to break is that <laughs> them kids eating with them napkins on that floor and having to eat that, drink that milk after that cereal. Baby, at Pretty Pea House, you can throw the cereal right all the way in that bag. I do not care about that milk. I don't. I'm going to break that. Oh my God. I ain't doing that. <laughs> the and if you don't want to eat it, you don't have to. I'm breaking that generational curse. <laughs> and y'all ain't getting whooped with with extension cords because we we don't even have them motherfuckers no more. You get whooped with USB. No, fuck that. You gonna get hit with an iron fist. <laughs> yeah, shot fuck at all motherfucker. That. And another thing I want to take out of generational curses, I don't want CPS. I don't want no CPS. Just call the next best in the family. You hear me? Oh, man. So hopefully you guys out there can figure out what generational curse you want to break in your family. Oh, one more. I want to have dishes. We grew up eating out of I cannot believe it's better boxes and shit like that. I'm tired of that. Oh, this bitch. I am going to fuck her up. <laughs> this bitch has over. to keep the cereal bag so we can have <laughs> I am going to fuck her up. She puts spaghetti in Wheaties boxes and save it for the next day. I don't want that. My mom was freezing the fuck out of spaghetti. Hey, my mama still got some spaghetti from the 90s oh, that she be wanting us to eat. Like, bitch, what the fuck? This shit hard as a boulder rock. Generational curse. Get that shit from the hey, bottom of the deep freezer and throw you. it away. It's not Another cookable. generational curse. I'm not drinking nothing with that brown rim I'm not doing it I'm not doing it I'm sorry generational curses don't oh. have these three bitches oh, on another it. thing is another generational curse I'm breaking my refrigerator will never have a bald spot our, our oh refrigerator my God. had alopecia for 10 years I'm not fucking with that I ain't fucking with that all that. That bitch had had alopecia. <laughs> we got to open it and then slam it because it ain't nothing in there. I pray to God that my kids break that generational curse of eating crouton and egg salad. We ain't doing that. Boiled baby. eggs. I we got, ain't doing that. I got my grandkids my liking neighbor. boiled eggs. My neighbor <laughs> liked an onion soup. And now let me tell you something. The generational curse of we breaking is we're not eating, drinking warm water. We're not doing that. You hear me? Oh, <laughs> this, drinking and that, and that ghetto juice that Brenda's got a baby's juice. Ah, my kids ain't drinking that shit. Y'all crazy as fuck. Motherfuckers grew up drinking that tang. <laughs> Nigga, that tang. Now you got that thing. Nigga, fuck oh all that. Oh my God, I can't stand water. these bitches. <laughs> Niggas talking about they ain't thirsty, drinking out of water hoses and shit. My kids ain't doing none of that shit. That's so much lead poisoning. Yeah. Your kids are so perfect. I'm, oh my I'm God. snapping them generational <laughs> cousins. And, and they'll be going, yeah. I ain't, I'm not <laughs> eating that. Niggas pull up to McDonald's and got a sheer burger. We're not doing that. <laughs> got a sheer to drink. I'm drinking follicles from niggas <laughs> breakfast in my, in my juice. Nigga, no. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck. And my house ain't smelling like Barney's piss. I'm not doing none of that shit. Generational <laughs> curse. Wash those sheets. No, that you're making nigga, guess what else? No, fuck general curses. Generational smells. We're not smelling like piss and syrup. Ain't your mama's syrup crystal hot sauce, nigga. And grease from Granny Grand's motherfucking house. Nigga, fuck all that. We ain't doing brown paper bags. We're not doing none of that. I'm just saying. <laughs> my TV ain't got a BBL, nigga. Fuck all that. Our shit is on the wall. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm saying. She is a nut. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. I got off subject. <laughs> Those were triggers. Generational curses. We're breaking generational curses. We're snapping them motherfuckers in half. And that's that. Okay. Oh. Anything else? I'm sorry. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all did <Huh>? terrible. <laughs> <laughs> fuck out of here but I'm gonna tell y'all what my mama did she stopped those generational curses <laughs> in 93 in 93 when she I knew you was out. coming baby I knew I knew I better at 13 she I knew was I had with better me. get it together she knew what to do uh, she said, I knew you, I knew it she said Shit. when you was 13 you knew Emily was coming uh, when <laughs> 
<laughs> when you was pregnant with me at 13, you knew what the fuck to do. I was not 13. The doctor said, oh, no, baby, I think you got to hit her right here on this one. <laughs> You're going to have to keep this When one. I had my first child, I was not 13. I was 15. You had me at 12, but that's cool. <laughs> She's all right. I ain't mad at you, motherfucker. I'm she just saying. The doctor said, you're going to have a hitter right here. Keep this This one. is a hitter. You're going to have to keep. This bitch is the motivation. What did DJ Kelly say? <laughs> Another one. You need this one. Okay. So, I'm, I, we're we're going to stay on subject, but this goes hand saying. in hand. You did excellent, though, baby. It's your people. Pretty P roasted Lexi about her being an incubator baby so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, guess what I call no, Lexi? No, when she tricked her with that money thing. Mama, was... Mama, you know Lexi was born 35 weeks early, right? <laughs> Shut up, bitch. She wasn't born no 35 weeks early. <laughs> well, he said she was half-baked. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even know what that do to me. <laughs> this motherfucker. She crazy. was a preemie, but she, she wasn't 35 she weeks. She was a microwave Mama, baby. Mama, she had to be reheated. Said. Mama, guess what I said? I said, but Lexi came out looking like Casper. <laughs> she said Lexi had to be reheated. <laughs> Oh. No. When well, she got that check for forty two dollars. Hey, and she Lexi told Lexi it was for forty two hundred. <laughs> she said she was under the glow in the dark light. <laughs> Lexi wasn't Lexi didn't have jaundice. She was just white. <laughs> she bitch wasn't done. Leave me alone. She said <laughs> put that bitch back in that plastic bag. <laughs> That's what I said. Oh <laughs> shit. She almost white. Put that bitch back in that. <laughs> She, she Lexi, Lexi looks like a puppy. <laughs> she said. <laughs> she said. Well, she said Lexi had to be reheated in the microwave. Oh my I gosh! Done. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so enough on snapping those generational curses. Yes. One thing we won't be stopping in our family is that dark humor. <laughs> right. Incubator, banky babies. <laughs> <laughs> no, when you told her her check was for forty two hundred, it was for forty two dollars. Hey, but the way I manipulated that bitch, I told her you got a letter from Bill Bondsman. I knew she was gonna let me open it. <laughs> oh my god, this girl is insane. Hey, but the thing is, like she told me, you are like my nightmare. I said, glad to know. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to oh, the Bad shit. Intentions podcast. Oh, okay. Yes, indeed, baby, because these oh, bitches man. is crazy. She, uh, <laughs> she what was story? crazier? Me and they the lying on spoons. me. <laughs> what? Those black spoons were made. And those dirty carpets that y'all yeah, wanted us to you know, sleep we on. We had some spoons with, you know, where Fuck they shot here. up a little heroin. It ain't nothing. What? That's why I don't eat cereal. <laughs> what? <laughs> Niggas' carpets look like yeah. auto repair shop. <laughs> I'm not fucking with it. Oh, that's how y'all gonna do me? Okay. No, mama bought new carpet for 328 but that all sure. happened after i was born because she <laughs> yeah. knew what was going on yeah 328 she she remember mama was so bossy she went and got some nunchucks i mean the chucks to put in the yard the the shit that we had at the school playground yeah but see that's the thing sheila and omar and dion and them was starving i was <laughs> oh, no. sheila had they was getting them brown paper bags we had plastic when i came about i'm just saying <laughs> She, she is crazy. crazy. She and then Mama was putting creek water in their bottles. Not mine, baby. <laughs> not creek water. <laughs> they was they was getting food from her. Said, "Ah, not not over <laughs> here." Was, I never want. I never been one of them kids happy to go to school for lunch. Though <laughs> no. I did. I was not her. I had three dollars. I don't know why they clowned Actually, like the that. lunch money. I, 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 my money go. I took I my mama's <laughs> money. <clears throat> yeah, remember that mom? I took mama's yeah. money and gave it, away to all the, gave it away to all the peasants. <laughs> she sure did. She she made it rain at school I in did. the second grade. So I went away and I did that first. Yeah, with her mama's. Trap money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my mama did buy a whole RV with coins. I seen it. She bought it with pure change. So, you know, she has really been in the game. We we was like fake poor. You know, we was boss balling. Oh, no, bitch. I wasn't poor. Shout out to my one thing Keith. about him is I told him, <clears throat> don't ever say anything that goes on in the house. And they, they they stood on business with that one. Oh no, I'm they did it not now. say a word. <laughs> I was scared. I was just too stand frightened. on business. Yeah, they didn't sure. say nothing. Because my whole thing was like, I just don't want to be going to live with no white people. I know. Could you just imagine us have been? I don't think I would oh, have this goodness. humor. I would probably be in jail. I'd be hoeing. <clears throat> I'd be hoeing because I would have had to survive. Because right now I'm not a hoe because I don't have to hoe. 
<laughs> but I would have I would have had to hoe. I never had to hoe. But now we got sandwiches and ice chest <laughs> and all sorts of delectables. Yeah, baby, shit. Uh, Nigga, we eat fat. lamb. We yeah, we have at the end of the month because y'all remember what happened back in the days. <laughs> it was funny because our partner was just saying that he ain't never had lamb before, and I was like, "Nigga, that's crazy. That's crazy." I, then I seen the price of why you know niggas don't eat lamb because you got the old school days. That, that's when it was fun though. You know, we you just kind of think about good. it. But I still I, do. But I'm glad I got a lot of my mama's traits, though. I got that survival shit down. For sure. And strength. Resilience. Yeah, I got that strength and that resilient. I got a little of that ism. I got that violence. I got all of that in there. <laughs> <laughs> violence! I got everything but the good stuff. The patience, you know, the sweetness, <laughs> the caring. Yeah, because I stand on my patience. You know. I don't have that's any of I that. Am. I need mine's on time or I'm coming to yours to get mine and that's when I'm going to be Ooh, there sure at the top of a dime. You cannot be late. You cannot be none of that. Window. That bitch will go You're insane. Be you better be ready when she get there. Oh. Otherwise, it's a problem. Oh no, bitch! Because if you I gotta say see nice, me limping down them motherfucking <laughs> stairs, because she know I'll to get to that bitch and leave. She I do not you play nice. that late, and all you ain't ready, and all that. Uh -uh. That's why I don't fuck with Sheila. Yeah. Sheila tell oh, her bitch, Sheila's late. Every, Sheila tell uh -huh. her bitch to be there too, but she don't get there till two the next day. <laughs> yeah, I don't have she's time something for that. else. Then she get mad and say, "I got four kids." No, I say I can't leave without my house clean because of Merced. <laughs> yeah, I have real and those folks. roaches oh, and those God. sunflower seeds. But yeah. let's let's get to let's she just said get those past roaches and those sunflowers. Let's get seeds. past this. We gotta let this go, cause I'm I, I got I got shit in okay, the. Okay, y'all, we we button. gonna wrap it up. <laughs> Generational wealth, we'll close that. But I just did, I wanted Snap to say it. too, um, we are trying to break a lot of curses, and I think with me, like the generational wealth thing is good, but you also have to have generational mental health. I want to make sure. sure I say that we want to make sure that our people have really, really good mental health moving forward, and just teaching our kids things that are in our head and between our mm -hmm. ears and our eyes. You know, just trying to get their thoughts together, how to manage trauma, how to manage all these things we went through. We are laughing about now, mm -hmm. but wasn't shit funny. But if you have an uh -huh. aunt or uncle that's not really doing the right thing. Don't don't do what they do just because if they right. sit up and, you know, do drugs all day. You mm -hmm. know, you don't want to do that. You want to do better. You want to <clears throat> have better. You know, you want to be able to, you know, uh, grow up, have kids. You don't want to be killed in the line of fire and all that all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And just try to, you know, do the best that you can. Because I, I shared that real quick because, you know, a lot of the time um, breaking generational curses has a lot to do with, you know, in Merced, a lot of us were, a lot of children ended up becoming gangbangers because of the influence that they in the seen. Environment. In the environment. Yeah, you know, I mean, the stuff that they seen, their aunts and uncles and brothers and right. mother and father and all those people do the, you know. And that has caused so much stress on a lot of young brothers and sisters and put us in a life of crime and getting cases and being a part of gang files and all this other stuff, gang enhancement charges. It's happened to my own family with my brother, you know. Um, that's why I was telling this story because a lot of the times you know, shout out to my brother Lamel and free his son, Lam little Lamel. But a lot of the times, just because what he survived, his son didn't have those same options. You know what I mean? His son, who also ended up joining a gang and being a part of that same life cycle, he ended up losing a lot of his freedom. And, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, he's he's done a lot of time already. And my brother has been through the ringer with, you know, the gangbanging life. And now he's trying to change his life and be having better for his children that's younger and all this kind of stuff. So it can start at any time. You know what I mean? And we got to make sure that we try to push that to each other and push the neck, the push away the negative and increase the positive between the mental health because that's where it starts. You know, it's deeper than the finances. And like Pretty P said, you know, if we learn how to break or snap them in half and we start as young as us with our children, hopefully we can get to a better space where we can have the finances being recognized and spread it amongst the family and whatever the case. And like, you know, we're all successful in our own right. I mean, my brother Omar, he's doing really well and he has property and he's had a great successful car lot and things like that. And we're just trying to make sure Trust that we all can have the fruits Trust of that labor without him just giving it to us. We want to be able to get the information ourselves and be able to use it. And that's generational wealth and giving it to his kids and having that kind of pattern. But we first have to break the generational mental health. We have to start with what's between our ears and our eyes.
So yeah, that's I wanna, not healthy. Mental I want to end healthy mental illness with saying that I love my mother unconditionally. Yes, I don't give a fuck what she did before me. <laughs> I don't care what she did. I don't care what she had to what she had to do. I, there's nothing that would make me. Never not love my mother. Oh, I, 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 that. I, I love her. And now she's my daughter. That. Yeah. So yeah. I take care That's of her true. and take her to see Ghostbusters. <laughs> even though she didn't want to. She was like, I don't even really even fuck, fuck with, with it. it. No, she said, I don't even really fuck with the movies. But uh, <laughs> then guess what she said? She's so cool. She said, I know you didn't pay for me, did you? <laughs> you know, I get that senior discount. <laughs> That's mama's favorite shit, the right. senior, senior part. Make That's sure you good, get mine though. off. <laughs> and I thought my mom was a veteran. <laughs> so... <laughs> She did come home one day and, and tell me that. Uh, I thought they could eat free at Golden Corral. <laughs> she was like, I'm a senior or something. I was like, bitch, I thought you was a bitch. All them stripes you got on. I know you. All, All them battles. I got, the stars and cigarette burns. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. Them notches, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty Pete, do you have anything for me? Because I have something. Yeah, I'm done with healthy mental okay. illness. Okay. We're closing? Yes. Okay. Healthy mental. You want to start with something else? No, we're closing. Let's okay. close. Because I do want to eat because I'm hungry. <laughs> and that's a generational curse. All that we're eating at home. No, bitch. We're going out. So We've anyways, been going out for 10 years. Yeah, bitch. I'm eating out. I don't give a fuck if it's $80. It's $80. I'm going to say something real quick to funny with that because um, <laughs> my friend was talking to me the other day and Salah said, um, we're going to go somewhere when I break my fast. And Salah said, to Red Lobster? And then Saudi said, no, I want to go to I want to go to Applebee's. Then Hamza said, nah, I'm, I want to go to Outback. I like the uh, grilled cheese. And that nigga said, damn, they got hella options. I've never even seen kids. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said I, didn't, I thought they was like dollar menu kids. Like, yeah, I said, no, oh like, my what? God. That's a generational curse we're breaking. Yeah, we don't do the dollar menu. <laughs> we had enough cheeseburgers. <laughs> we okay. had enough of them chicken sandwiches from okay. McDonald's. <laughs> like, you know, I just would like to thank Allah for blessing me for my daughters and. You know my son. I'm about to say about time she put something <laughs> on the bitches, and I you know my daughters. Bitch. We're all good. You know we have a, we really have a good time though. Right. And I'd I'd like for you to come out and see us. We're gonna be where are we gonna be? Wherever you want me to be, baby. Wherever Any time in El okay. Grove, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> we might be out there, out there. This might be a wolf line. It's coming soon again. Yeah, yeah. It's like for real. <clears throat> so let's get those things start together. being like out and about, and you know, show, to get show y'all how we get down. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, y'all will get to see bunk missions. We gonna we gonna bunk it up. <laughs> Ready for that, uh, I can't well, yeah, speak I'm gonna give it to you. We gonna we gonna work it out. I'm I'd like to send a missions. shout out to my grandson in Louisiana, Definitely. Deontay. Keep Lately, it, you know, he been moving. Lay down a little bit, baby. Don't, uh, don't be so hard on him. Uh, don't be so hard on him, D. I love you, Deontay. Yeah, we love you. You know, uh, what's that song I like? She going to make the team? She going to make, make the team, team, baby. Come on. <laughs> Come out here and make the team for us. Come on. <laughs> again. And again. Yeah, when she going to make the team. team. We was global. We Y'all got to hear my right? grandson <laughs> CD. It's clean, though. He was really making the team, bitch. Shout yeah. out to, to us. To, to, clean, to clean up this... <laughs> This mess we made today. We didn't I make just, no mess. I don't know. It's just a, it's just a phrase. <laughs> you did all that lying on me, but it's all right. The roaches and the goddamn what? Oh, they weren't roaches. They were cockroaches. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> okay. And bed bugs. <laughs> no. Okay. We never had bed bugs. Then shut, why else did you my bed on my shirt? Then why, why, else, then why <laughs> else was y'all so ate That's up? Prince. <laughs> Those, that skin. <laughs> That was eczema flying there through the There was nobody from her said that nigga, I knew that had good skin. Hold on. But we animals. never had motherfucking bed bugs. We had flaming roaches, hot flaming roaches. <laughs> hey, so. let me tell you something. He didn't All of their bugs. roaches were pregnant. That's how you know they was eating. All the roaches had babies. Okay? It was grandpa, up. papa. <laughs> the papas was in the back room. <laughs> then the babies was in the kitchen. Okay. Then the side <laughs> niggas was in the laundry. <laughs> where, where, uh, where was the side bitches at? What's her name? What's her name? Um, the grandma, our grandma. <laughs> Mama, Mama, no, Susie. Grandma, Mama Susie. Mama Susie. Mama Susie's bed, boy. <laughs> Emily, I'm going to fuck you up, you nigga. You want that milk, boy? 
Fuck I'm a fuck fuck Emily you. up. <laughs> hey, this is shit. Hey, what we not gonna break is the dark humor, man. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> we didn't have no motherfucking bed hey, bugs. We did, had they did. flame and roaches. They did. We didn't hey, have no bed bugs. These we had crack 9,000. No. Hold on, hold on. Excuse me. They didn't have no doorknobs. <laughs> they didn't have no doorknobs. It was no doorknobs popping off. Because <laughs> we had to run through the money, mate. No, no, no. We yeah. had to stick to that no, money. Money. It was too many addictions. <laughs> They didn't have no door there was no <laughs> We didn't. Have, we okay. The only thing we had was money. That money. <laughs> that, that's right. Okay. Nine thousand. I was. That's why I try to tell y'all. I've been eating out. Toby, shout out R.I.P. Toby. I get that nigga a ten dollar bill at five years old to tell this nigga give me some cinnamon toast, some cinnamon crunchies from from Taco I'm, Bell, nigga. I'm crying, nigga. What are you talking about? I've been doing this. I was never supposed to be hungry. <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? I was never supposed to start. Never. never. Uh, my mama knew what to do. My lashes. Okay. 93 was the best motherfucking year. That's what made <laughs> Sheila get to gain weight. Because the bitch was skull before I came about. God told my mom, okay, I'm going to give you pretty pee. This now, bitch. This is the last time. This is the last motivation I'm going to give you. Because, bitch, you can't go over there and get that brown meat no more. Okay. Ooh. Oh my God! I can't stop. Whose juice was the best? Though. Sheila can't even Real drink Mercedes. nothing red no more because of my mom and them. <laughs> I don't fuck with chicken. No. Fried chicken and all I don't that. Fuck with that because of the alley. Let though. me tell you something. I, me did. personally, I don't make my kids rice aroni and corn and fried chicken. Hey, I don't fuck with stroganoff either, man. Hey. <laughs> I don't do I'm this just saying. a real deal meal. I don't yeah. fuck with hamburger. That hand, corn, the hamburger helper hand. Queen I don't fuck corn, with him. Kettle. I don't do the hamburger helper I'm, hand. I want to give a shout Remember out. the tuna? The hamburger. I hamburger. suck with the tuna. My son ought to make tuna. I, I, I want to give a shout Adam, out they though. Fuck with the tuna. I want to give do the tuna. I want to give a shout out though to my little sister Lexi, and I. It's just because I really fucked her whole month up because she really thought she was gonna be well off with that forty two hundred dollars, <laughs> and it was only forty two dollars. <laughs> um, I want to give a shout out uh, to my son. Yes. He. He just, he got me another bill. <laughs> okay. We're doing this tutoring thing again because the African nigga in New York, I don't know what you were doing, <laughs> but it wasn't doing it. <laughs> so he has a new tutor. So oh my goodness. could you guys please book an appointment because that shit is three twenty a month and I really have to pay for that. Um, I want to give a shout out to Bella. I'm trying to teach my baby what self-worth looks like. That's right. And, Good job, and mommy. teaching her and teaching her that if the bitch don't want to be her friend, you can either punch her or just stop talking to the bitch. That's just that. I do promote violence only one way, and that's if it's disrespect. Um, I want a cat. I'm going to get a cat just soon. I want a uh, Bombay cat. Yeah. If you know anybody that have one, let us know. For sure. A black Bombay cat. I want to give a heart to my guy, Henry. Thank hey, you. Well, hi, my, Henry. My Terrence couple, Howard looking nigga. I got a couple of jobs for you, Henry. <laughs> my nigga. If you have to put up a pretty bee, I feel sorry for you. But anyway. <laughs> I told her that we need an enhancement, you know, to, you know, get to popping and everything. You know, like. Why? Drink something, uh, you know. Smoke oh, something. I don't need nothing. Look. I guess the party just start. wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Firecrackers. <laughs> All she do is wake but up. Bad and... Intentions podcast. We got a lot of revamping to do. Bunk missions is coming. Um, we trying to stir y'all up <clears throat> the right way. We, try, we 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 got some content going. We got some other shit that's on that notepad. We just can't I talk lost, about it right now. I lost ten pounds. Sheila lost ten pounds because she's fasting. No. Oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Uh -oh. Wait. Wait. Okay. I just oh, have to happened? say this right quick. <clears throat> uh oh. I did this. I'm not gonna say the lady's name. I did this lady's hair, and this probably might come off a little unprofessional. But uh, okay, we were talking about me and my other sister were talking about this sister because we were gonna call her or something about something. But I was like, you know, she's fasting, and so my client at that time had asked me like, why? Why is she fasting? Like, is she? You know, what is she doing? I said, well, it's Ramadan. She's a Muslim or whatever. Right. And she was like, oh, well, did you hear about this? I said, how did you? I said, do not say nothing about Muslims in my household. I don't condone. And I said, what is your religion? She said, I'm a crit. And I went, mm. <laughs> mm. 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 <laughs> Long story short, that bitch ain't coming back. Okay. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. And I'll <laughs> see. <laughs> I'll 
I'll finish it up with this. Um, you know, me, uh, Ramadan is celebrated because that's when the Prophet Muhammad, yeah. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, received the Quran by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> you know, um, that's when he received that's when the Quran came to us and that's something we live by and go by and follow. And it's also good for us is because fasting is the reason why we fast is because it shows us humility. It shows us humbleness and it shows us that you can have everything in the world or whatever, but you're going to do what Allah says. Allah wrote it down just like we don't eat pork because Allah says don't eat pork. Now come to find out scientifically and health wise, it's not good for you. You feel what I'm saying? So we're following the rules and we're studying and we're, we respect all religions. I respect all religions that respect me. Mm. And my uncle guy has taught me a long time ago. And I always tell people this, you know, you can study other religions. We study study other religions, we respect them, but we practice Islam, you uh -huh. know? So that's just how we roll. I don't, I always hear people say many of things about Islam and you know, what we doing and is you Muslim, Muslim, uh, is you fasting, is you the nation, is you the whatever and don't I always- kill people. Yeah, so what yeah. I say to that is, you know, just do a little bit more studying of what we do and, and try to, you know, the best thing about Islam is it teaches you a lot of self-control too. You know, that's one thing that's big during the month of Ramadan yeah. You have to fight all your vices. Rest in peace to the brother Jack. He said that, you know, uh, uh, when it's Ramadan, that's the only time I fight my addictions. You know what I mean? So we need more positive things to be said. And we, I always tell people, when you speak on what I do or how I do or how I perform, I don't drink or smoke, but I cuss. I'm, I'm trying to stop backbiting during Ramadan and things like that. Shout out to my cousin Abdullah, a real solid Muslim brother. You know, I just tell people, <laughs> take it at your own pace. You know, if you want to study Christianity, Buddhism, the stars, the moons, whatever you want to do, just do it at your own pace and respect other people's religion and their decision of what they do. You know, I, I hear all the time people talk about Islam and say this, uh -huh. but you know, my character, that's what I represent. I represent Islam before I'm a mother. You know, because Allah has made a way for me. He's provided so much for me, my sister, my mother. You know, we are prime representatives of blessings that come from prayer. You know, so that's what I do it for. And I'm fasting and inshallah, I'll be breaking my fast soon. I might break it early just on the strength of my guide, DiCaprio, and us go out to eat. So he gets a heart. But I'm going to say this for my... Um, Shout out, shout out to my cousin Kayla because me and her talk all the time and she's such a positive thinker. She's Hi, like, Kayla. A, yeah, she's a queen, real black woman, real solid, real, got the greatest information when it comes to telling you the truth. She speaks truth, she speaks her words, she speaks in faith and, and she doesn't have the same religion as me, but we have a lot of love and respect for each other as well. You know, so that's a, another great example. Shout out to my cousin, Michelle. Rest in peace to her son, Desic, again. You know, shout out to uh, my brother, Chill, my sister, Smoke, my brother, Pooh Bear, my brother's Omar, my brother, Rasan, the whole Merced, 13th Street, <laughs> West Side. Shout out to 11th Street, KO. You know, shout I'd out like to the... I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to say baby. that... Um, <laughs> shout out to Thug. I'd you know? like to send a shout out to my son. My son will be gone for 25 years. Yes. Yes. And that it really, I don't know why that really bothers me so much. 25 years, April the 16th. So we're going to have a little uh, something, something going on on April the 16th. Definitely. Yeah. Represent my son. Been gone for 25 years, y'all. Mercy didn't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell y'all a quick story about my big brother, Dion. Let me tell y'all how dope he was, right? Because Dion, we, well, I remember when he had the uh, five CD changer when we went to his house over there by Yosemite Ave. And we went over there to go see this CD go crazy and change five different. But look, hold on. Dion picked me up from Gracie Elementary. I was student of the month. I had my certificate. He pulled up, beat slapping. He was going crazy. He had the beat and everything. He got his hat off to the side, his head pounding or whatever. He turned down the music. I jump in. I'm looking back and everybody's looking like, oh, you're so tight. That's you know? right. That's right. He stopped the car in front of everybody. This is a true story. This is just going to show you how we need more big brothers like this and real men like this. Dion stopped the car. And the fucking car had a phone in it ringing. And I was like, what is that? And Dion pulled the armrest up and he said, hello. He said, it's for you. It's mama. And I went crazy. I was like, oh, they got on the phone. 
out. It was that was back in the land. But like you, like Pretty P said, we had to get some money for real because he was for getting real. ugly. But Dion was such a great big brother. I, I love him. I miss him. I wish my sons and my daughters could get to see my brother. I, I wish he would have got to see his grandchildren. Shout out to my nephew Dion and Deontay. You know, but my brother Omar is doing RJ. a great job. Yeah, you know, just showing the way. But you know, I do miss Dion like you wouldn't imagine because he was such a solid brother. And you know, we'll always celebrate him, and he is forever in our hearts. And man, I'll be pleased with him. Yeah, for sure. So if you got somebody that you miss and you know keep them lit keep them on fire I, I shine and shit some bitches for my brother you huh. know cause when they look at me they gonna say oh yeah that's that's yeah that's them that's how they do that's how they come every time and honey, 25 I, years we've been doing that and honey yeah. I text it as a compliment when people tell me I look like my mom and I act like for my sure. mom <laughs> and they say that <laughs> they say that y'all gonna say that <laughs> now yeah. pay me like y'all did her too <laughs> anyway <laughs> Bad Intentions Podcast. We got she is bitches. insane. We got insane in the Imagine party. Imagine having to be that 24 with that 24. Oh, seven a week, honey. Pretty P, Bad Intentions Motherfucking Podcast. Like I said, we got a lot of shit coming y'all way. Well, yeah, so Long stay tuned. Are people stay in contact. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that curse. <laughs> but I got a little healthy mental illness. Um, little healthy mental Ill illness issues so it's my love to nobody bad attention bye bitch <laughs>